Thank you all very much for, for joining us here today. Today, we are gathering to pay tribute to one of our own. On January 8th in Tucson, Arizona, tragedy struck this country in a shooting that shocked our nation and tore through the fabric of the congressional community and family. Six people died that horrific day, including our own Gabriel Zimmerman. Now, just more than six months after his death, it is time that we in the United States House of Representatives properly honor his service. Many of you know his story. Gabe was a community outreach director for my friend and colleague, for our friend and colleague, Gabby Giffords. By all news accounts and by tributes, countless tributes by those who knew him, he was perfectly suited for the job. That is because Gabe loved people. He had a way about him that invited conversation. In my trips to Arizona and, and to Tucson specifically, and talking to Gabby's staff, uh, this was a young man who had not only a bright future, but the biggest heart that, uh, that anyone who met him uh, could, uh, could talk about. Uh, he, he loved people. He had a way about him that invited conversation. He devotedly carried out his job, making government work every day for Arizonans. You needed a big heart for that job, and very few were more caring than Gabe. There was no job that was too big or too small for him, and I know that as members of Congress, we all are so supported by our staff who are all no task too small kind of people. That's an incredibly important qu quality in a congressional staffer, and it's hard to come by. It's a, it's a rare quality, and uh, when you find someone like Gabe, it's incredibly special. He'd go out of his way to help people in trouble, recalled Daniel Graver, who hired uh, Gabe in 2006. People would come into the congressional office, he would listen to them, and give them money for a cab home. This loyal, determined public servant made the ultimate sacrifice for this country. In fact, Gabe Zimmerman is the first congressional staffer murdered in the line of duty in our institution's history. It is with that eye toward history that we gather together today to announce that today we'll be introducing a resolution in the House of Representatives to name this room, HVC 215, as the Gabe Zimmerman Room. This, this distinction would recognize the devoted service of not only Gabe, but also of the thousands of staffers in the Capitol and around this country who work for and have worked for the people of the United States by working for the United States Congress. These men and women make so many sacrifices to make our lives and the lives of our constituents better. They provide so many critical services like helping veterans get benefits or helping seniors get Social Security checks. They work an untold amount of hours and never complain. So today, we properly memorialize Gabriel Zimmerman and we honor the staff in the Capitol and around the country for their dedication to making the world a better place. That is what this room will symbolize from here on out forevermore. To help shed some light on who Gabe was as a person and his dedication to serving the people of Southern Arizona, it is my incredible privilege to introduce Gabe's mom, Emily Nottingham. Emily. Thank you. And thank you to Congresswoman Wasserman Schultz and to Congressman Schweikert for introducing this resolution and to the support of the entire Congress the Arizona delegation. It means a lot to us. My son, Gabe, was killed while helping Congresswoman Giffords carry out some of the most important work uh, of Congress, listening to the people back in her district. All sorts of folks were in line that day at the grocery store in Tucson. People with questions, strong opinions, and personal needs, and a child who just wanted to see democracy at work. It's right to honor Gabe here at the Capitol, where Congress is charged with responding to the needs of those people who stood in that line at that grocery store, and to all Americans by crafting our nation's laws. While he was the first congressional staff person in the United States history to be killed in the line of duty, it's not his death, but his work and his ideals that should be recognized here. Ideals shared by thousands of congressional staff people over hundreds of years of our nation's history. Gabe thought a lot about and cared about the importance of civic engagement in an open civil society. That concept, that goal, which is a, con a cornerstone of our democracy, 
can be remembered in this room along with an idealistic young man who died trying to carry it out. Thank you. Thank you very much. Just want to take a minute to introduce uh, our colleague Dave Schweikert, uh, an incredible representative who uh, agreed from day one to uh, to join me in introducing this resolution and uh, and has been doing a fantastic job representing his constituents in Arizona. Dave. Um, Thank you, Congresswoman and Mom and, and Ben. Um, this is one of those moments where you get in front of the microphones and you're hoping you have the words that are appropriate to say, how do you honor a young man who was part of our congressional family? Um, you know, for, for, for many of us, this is much more than just employees or people we work with. These are the people that keep an eye out for us, who, who advocate for our constituents, who solve problems. And Gabe had an amazing reputation of being one of the most caring individuals you could possibly have as a staffer. And yet, he lost his life doing that. Mm -hmm. And we stand here today to try to honor, um, honor his gift, honor the wonderful things he did for the community, but also honor our entire congressional families, that we do care, we do love you, and it is a, a right thing to do, naming something as simple as this room for the wonderful things he did for Arizona, for his district, but also for the family. And I'd also like to bring Ben up, who is Gabe's brother, um, to also share with us. Uh, well, thank you. And again, I'd like to thank Congresswoman Washington Schultz and Congressman Schweikert, as well as the other members of the Arizona delegation for introducing this resolution that would name this room in honor of my brother, Gabriel Zimmerman. Uh, Gabe really enjoyed his time. Looking for Congressman Giffords. He was a committed, committed congressional staff member who approached his job with openness and kindness, recognizing his gift. He tried to use his talents selflessly and with a dedication to making positive change. While Gabe's life was cut tragically short, what he taught me in that short time is that small acts of kindness can make a tremendous difference. I hope that Gabe's memory will serve to hon <clears throat> honor those congressional staff workers. The, let the negativity of politics roll off of them with grace and a smile, and instead focus their energy on service to their communities and compassion for their constituents. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm Congressman Ed Pastor, represent the 4th District of Arizona. First of all, I would like to welcome uh, Gabe's uh, mother and brother to Washington, D.C as we introduce this resolution, urging our leadership to quickly bring the resolution to the floor so that we can pass the resolution and name this room in the honor of Gabriel Matthew Zimmerman. In a sense, Gabe was following his mom's footsteps because his mom gave service to the community of Tucson, Arizona by working with the Housing Authority. So she made sure that uh, people had a safe, secure place to live in, in Arizona, in Tucson, and also worked very tirelessly to make sure that people in Tucson had a better quality of life. As other speakers have said, this is a tribute in the memory of 
gave Matthew Zimmerman, who gave service to not only his constituents in uh, southern Arizona, but to the people of this nation. And today, as public employees are under great stress, not only in this great city of Washington, D.C., but throughout the other cities of our nation, it is also to remind us that uh, public employees also work very hard to bring services and continue to better the life of our constituents and our citizens. So this, this room will also honor their service. It's now a great pleasure for me to introduce the, another member of Congress, the great Jeff Flake. Well, thank you, Adam. Thank you for all being here, and a special thanks to Emily for being here and, uh, and for Ben. Thank you, Emily, for raising such a fine son uh, who is an example to all of us. And, uh, and Ben, I'm sure he learned from you as well. Um, when anybody knows who, who runs a district office or the whole congressional office, that those in the district office often deal with some of the toughest complaints and uh, some of the, the, uh, the most demanding constituents sometimes, and that's just how it goes. And, uh, and all of us uh, benefit as members of Congress uh, by having uh, people at the staff level, particularly in the states, uh, for those who are cheerful and those who go about their business in a knowledgeable way and, and have the reputation that, that uh, Gabe enjoyed. And uh, this is an honor, uh, I think, that is so well deserved uh, to have this room named in his honor and as a way to pay tribute to all the staffers who do this as well. And so thank you. And I'll now introduce uh, Trent Franks, who represents the West Valley. Well, it's a, it's a precious honor for me to be here today with all of you. It is altogether right and fitting that we should remember uh, Gabe Zimmerman because he personified what uh, so many young people uh, try to reach for in life. He had a life committed to serving others, and there's no more noble uh, commitment on this earth than that. And uh, from now on, when people walk through this room, his name will be remembered. And we will recognize that uh, uh, all of our lives are so, so brief and that we should be about those things that uh, animated his own spirit. And so I, um, this moment, uh, honor Gabe Zimmerman in this place that he will be remembered for in this capital more than any other, perhaps. I think sometimes it's easy for us uh, to focus on the person who lost their life in a situation like this, but all too often it's easy for us to forget uh, the pain that is felt by a mother and a brother, uh, by those who knew him better than the rest of us. Um, it is said that uh, uh, the love of a brother for a brother endures like the stars. And certainly, I think all of us would recognize that the love of a mother for her child is simply beyond expression. And none of us can feel the burden that they do. None of us know the, the uh, hurt that is laid on their broken shoulders. But uh, today, I just want to tell them that I think their son and their brother would be very, very proud of them for being here and for remembering him as they do. And um, I just remind them that he waits on the balcony for them and that uh, uh, this miracle of life is indeed just that. And we have not heard the last from Gabe Zimmerman. I am, I'm Congressman Ben Quayle from Arizona's 3rd Congressional District. I want to say thanks to uh, Gabe's mom and brother for being here today. And uh, thanks to Congresswoman Wasserman Schultz and Congressman Schweiker for introducing this piece of legislation because uh, none of us will forget that fateful day back in January when Gabe and five others lost our lives basically doing something that is very unique to the to America and that is talking with your representative and having the representative listen to your concerns and uh, that's something that we will continue to strive to accomplish and to strive to to be able to emulate those types of interactions with with constituents all across the country and uh, you know it's been said here today but it, I think it needs to be said one more time, is that Gabe and other staff members, I mean, they're the ones that make the engine run. They're the ones who really are the, one, the unsung heroes. They're the ones who put in tireless hours 
and are the ones who are dealing with, the, with, uh, with constituents and with issues day in and day out, and they never complain, and they're the ones who don't get the credit. So this is a tremendous honor and a well-deserved honor to name this room after Gabe because as years go by and the memory and the pain of that day fade away, people will walk by, members, Congress, new members, new staff, and they'll ask the question, who is Gabe Zimmerman? And they'll hear his story and they'll learn about him and so his legacy will continue to live on. So thank you and I'd like to introduce uh, Congresswoman Gifford, Chief of Staff, Kia. Um, it's a great honor to be here today recognizing my good friend and our colleague Gabe Zimmerman. Um, thanks to Congresswoman Wasserman Schultz and Congressman Schweikert for their strong leadership on this and the entire Arizona delegation for your help and support. Um, as you know, Gabe was the first congressional aide to be murdered while doing his job. He died while performing his congressional official duties. Um, his first Congress in Your Corner was February 2007, and uh, he organized many of them, dozens, close to 100 of them, before his last on January 8, 2011, each with the same grace and poise. He, um, that morning, arrives early to set the tables up, put the signs out, arrange the, the uh, handout material, and uh, he died while standing near and staffing our boss. Um, you know, it was what he loved that he did every day, which was helping people and serving the public. His legacy of service demonstrates how congressional offices can make a real tangible difference in people's lives. And that's what we want to be remembered with the naming of this room. Um, I'd just like to quickly share a, uh, a message from Congresswoman Giffords' husband, Mark Kelly. He just posted this on his Facebook page. Um, he wrote, Gabe Zimmerman was an exemplary public servant proving to be a role model to all of us who serve our nation. He worked as Gabby's Director of Community Outreach for over four years. In that time, he became a trusted aide and a friend to her. He spent his last hour alive doing the thing he loved, using his gifts of empathy, warmth, and communication to enhance the well-being of other people through public service. It would be fitting to see his name in the Capitol Visitor Center. His commitment to his job, to Southern Arizona, and to the nation truly represents the spirit of government service. Thanks.